Hey guys, this is Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and uh, every now and then I do one of these dissecting somebody videos. So I've done Only Use Me Blade, and I've done Sandy Ravage already, and now I'm doing X Socrates. So uh, he has a YouTube channel, there'll be a link to it in the description, it's like Josh Mac 77 or something close to that. And um, uh, this guy is a truly good player. So oftentimes there's this discussion about who the best player on YouTube is, and uh, Socrates by far belongs on that short list. So I'm going to talk about some of his accomplishments before I talk about uh, the gameplay, because all he does here is uh, get pwned like a noob to start. Anyway, uh, he's played doubles in game battles. Uh, one season his team went 40 and 0. Uh, they played, I think, 9 or 10 seasons, and they got first place in doubles three or four times. Uh, their team ladder team was, uh, I think, 194 and 10 or something close to that. So uh, you know, these guys are, are right there with the, the very elite in terms of competitive gameplay. And then uh, in terms of pub stomping, well, you know, I'll, I'll let the game speak for itself. So before I really watched this video and took a careful look at it, what I expected to see was gameplay very much like Sandy Ravage. Now, what Sandy Ravage did is he advanced forward from cover to cover and uh, made sure that what his opponent had to shoot at was much smaller than what he had to shoot at. And he just sort of controlled the engagement. Longtime subscribers have heard me preach the importance of controlling the engagement game after game. And uh, um, But he does something different. What he does is he flanks from the side. So let's take a look at this last bit again. All right, now I see the radar, and you see the radar. There are people around the corner there, so what are you going to do about it? Let's watch how X Socrates handles it. Yeah, he handles it like a beast. So, um, what you see is a lot of that in this game. Like I said earlier, I expected to see him down where he is right now a whole lot. I expected to see only his head visible. There's a lot of chest high walls or, or the equivalent. Ah, I get sandy, Socrates. Um, there's a lot of chest high walls or the equivalent on this map where you can kind of set up like he is right there and make sure that you have an advantage by having a smaller target than the other guy. But that's not really what he does. What he does is he uses the power of the silencer and he sprints a whole lot and he makes sure that when he put, he faces his opponent, he tries to get to the side and he's flanking all the time. So this is a play style that, that, you know, of course everyone has it in their game. I see Sandy do this too. But in the Sandy video that I watched, it wasn't so much flanking to the side. It had a lot more to do with limiting his exposure to the enemy's bullets. So it looks like he, he saw that guy on the radar but uh, thought he was high when he was actually low. Another thing I want to call out was his weapon choice. So he's using a silenced P90. And th there were a couple things that stood out to me about the way that he used the Silence P90. One of them was uh, um, he gets to stay and flank these guys, and he gets th that flanking is more effective for him than I would have guessed. And I think a ton of that has just to do with the, pow the power of the silencer. It, he goes up next to these guys and flanks three. He gets all these multi-kills, three and four at a time, because uh, oftentimes he gets to face them uh, when they're not expecting him. And there is a case where he dropped down to limit his exposure and, and uh, did it in the same way that the other rusher we analyzed, Sandy Ravage, did it, you know, by, by coming at the sides. So look at this guy. <laughs> All right, he didn't take on. He got drop shotted there. Thank goodness he's, he's mortal. So the silencer, I think, has a big effect on the play style that he, choose, that he chose. Um, because he's, he, he can get to the side of them and fire this thing without showing up on the radar, then you know, he makes sure that he uses flanking as opposed to a more conservative style. I, I bet if he had an M16, then he would sit there using some, uh, some cover and picking people off from a distance, which is another pretty effective way to play this map. It's actually my favorite way to play wet work. I uh, you know, throw nades, use position. If he had an M16, he would have won that gunfight instead of just uh, flanking like he did. So back to, uh, back to what he's actually doing here. Uh, he rushes into their spawn, gets on the side, and gets kills. Another thing I noticed about him is this guy is not afraid to use his bullets. Uh, the P90 has a pretty big clip, and he's using Bandolier. And I bet if you were to look at his accuracy, it wouldn't be a super impressive number. But that's okay, because you know what's super impressive is the fact that he wins games, that uh, he does it in, in pub matches as well as competitive matches, and it's super impressive that he, that he racks up the kills like he does. Um, you might think that uh, he's not being an objective-based player, but I think that he is. He's locking these guys in, the, in their spawn, and uh, he keeps them <laughs> totally out of this game uh, until the game is, is over, at which point I think he pretty much doesn't concern himself with map control anymore. 
So he uses bandolier, and he is not afraid to fire his bullets. And I think that something in my own game, when I rock, say, in Modern Warfare 2 Scavenger Pro, meaning that I start off with a big clip and it's easy to get more, huh, I've had a lot more success just firing until they drop. You know, Don't try and count your bullets and get three and then move on. I, I, I will count out that that might be a pretty effective strategy for PC gamers, where accuracy in general is much higher because uh, you know the mouse affords them that. But in console, but for console gamers, I, I think counting your your bullets is unlikely to be a really great move. Uh, shooting until they drop is, is going to lead to success a lot more consistently, consistently, and that's especially true if you're rocking one of the perks that gives you a lot of bullets. And this is COD 4, so it, in, in case it's playing Bandolier, but it is Scavenger in um, in both Modern Warfare 2 and it looks like in Black Ops, the Scavenger is going to be the one. That, uh, that affords you virtually limitless ammo. Another thing I noticed, and this might be somewhat map specific, but he never has nades in his pocket. <laughs> this is a guy who almost immediately dumps his nades and has this, uh, what seems to be a philosophy of, you know, if you die with nades in your pocket, then you've wasted your, your grenades. So, uh, so in wet work, the nade spots are fairly predictable. You know where guys are traveling and the spawn is as predictable as can possibly be. So, uh, yeah, as soon as he comes alive, he kicks off his kill streak with uh, some nades and stuns and, and does what he can. And do you see how many bullets he fired on that guy? I bet he fired 20 bullets to kill that guy. And I really doubt he's thinking to myself, oh my gosh, you know, I should have killed him even faster. Uh, I bet he's thinking, yep, he's down and on to the next one. And that's a mindset that I, when I incorporate into my own game, it works a whole lot better for me than trying to predict you know, when the guy drops. Just, you know, fire until they're done and move on. Now the last thing I wanted to point out, and uh, you know this is a, a pub match where I think he wasn't really scared of losing, but uh, he didn't work the spawn trap like I would have in my game. I if this were if this were me and my friends, I think we'd all know where that imaginary line is just past the center point of the map, and we wouldn't be crossing it. Instead, we these poor souls would uh, would just be dying every time they came out in the open, uh, quitting the game repeatedly, and, and that's that's the way that we would try and work it. And what he does is he's really happy to rush into the spawn. He lost Bravo, but uh, you know he's up 154 to 79. I don't think he's going to lose. Instead, he's just going to pwn these poor noobs by outflanking them. And there's a, a 20 kill streak, which is a pretty big deal in Call of Duty 4. Not not the biggest deal, but uh, in Call of Duty 4, 20 kill streak is probably about as impressive as a 40 kill streak in Modern Warfare 2, just because the the air power doesn't work in the same way. So next comes some M4 work here, because uh, he used up all his bullets, and you might think, oh, he used up all his bullets, then uh, maybe he did shoot too many. On the other hand, you know, look at what he does in this game. So it, it, it's working for him. So one thing that caught my attention while he was using the M4, a bit more of an accurate gun, is his target acquisition. And did you see that? Watch him snap to target and get his kills. Now, it... I wish uh, snapping to target was the sort of thing that I could teach you. It, it's kind of like saying the key to running faster is to run faster, or you know, move your legs faster. It's like, I, I know that, Jackass, that's not very helpful. But um, one thing that helps him in his game, I think, is his target acquisition. This guy snaps on it like he was using a mouse. And um, uh, in, in the Xbox world or the PS3 world, then that's a huge advantage. So flanking to the side and acquiring his targets like like <laughs> like a beast. And there it is, 30 kill streak. Uh, really worked for him. So yeah, there's there's that. And then watch this. This is his buddy T much. And oh, what I think it's sorry. I thought it was coming. Here we go. I think he intentionally blocks him, or maybe he's calling it an airstrike, but he gets all upset. <laughs> So anyway, if I were to sum up what he does in, in this game, it's uh, he used a silenced weapon, he got to the side, he flanked his, uh, the enemy team, he, used, he never died with a nade in his pocket, and he acquired his target really, really quickly. And uh, those were the keys to his success in this game. It wasn't so much cover, it was uh, the way that he maneuvered the map. So, uh, so there's Exocrates, I hope you enjoyed it.